It's Friday in Lower Manhattan. While most other New Yorkers in this business district are on their lunch breaks, Muslims come to this rundown old building to pray. After the service, Sharif Al Gamal, the owner of the property, asks them for donations. And we need to raise five thousand dollars, and we need to do it in about five minutes because it's hot here, and we need to get back to work. Raising funds has become a full-time job for the real estate developer, who has grand plans for this site, just two blocks from where the World Trade Center once stood. And at the end of the day, it's an opportunity to demystify who we are as Muslims and really reclaim our narrative two blocks from where it was stolen from us. He wants to replace the old building with a new community center open to all New Yorkers, including a new prayer space that he hopes will make local Muslims proud. He's calling it Park 51. No less. No less. Opponents, however, have given it another name, the Ground Zero Mosque. He believes controversy over the project has scared away new investors. We as Muslims have a responsibility to take a stake in this project. And that's the biggest, the biggest problem that, that we're facing right now. Yeah, and Tunisia and but not all Muslims are sold on the project, which has suffered from internal divisions. Imam Faisal Raouf, initially its public face, is no longer involved due to a falling out with Gamal. Unfortunately, I think the way it's been sold and the way it's being structured right now, it's not a viable project. Kamal bought this building for just $5 million in 2009. He tells me he could sell it for 10 times that now. But he feels there's more than money at stake. Now it's a matter of pride for him and the entire Muslim community. I'm a believer. And I believe that when you embark on something good, failure is not an option. On this day, he raises $5,000 to fix the old building's sprinkler system but he needs seven million just to get the first phase of the project off the ground. Kristen Salumi, Al Jazeera, New York.